On pages 211, 212, and 213 of the 727 manual, you'll find a what called buffet boundary charts. These charts are used to predict when a low speed or a high speed buffet could take place, depending on the altitude, the weight, and the G-loading of the aircraft. The G-loading related to either banking the aircraft or experiencing turbulence. The three charts are for no turbulence, moderate turbulence, and heavy turbulence. Technically, the aircraft could be limited by one of the buffet boundary charts instead of the cruise thrust limits like we just looked at. However, the 727 is normally limited by the cruise thrust limits unless there's moderate or heavy turbulence. For that reason, I personally don't actually look at these charts for altitude capability unless the question specifically says moderate or heavy turbulence. And if it does say that, I know in my mind this is going to be a buffet boundary question rather than a cruise thrust limit question. Let's decipher these charts a little more. I'm going to be looking at the heavy turbulence chart here if you want to follow along. On the left side here we can see the altitude or the pressure altitude which is equivalent of the flight level. On the bottom we have the indicated airspeed. The curves are the buffet boundaries themselves depending on the weights. So on the left side of the curve it represents the low speed buffet boundary and on the high speed it represents a high speed. These diagonal lines represent the marked numbers flown but they're rarely used. This thick line down the middle, however, is pretty important. This represents the turbulence penetration speed. You can see the line starts at the bottom here with 280 knots indicated airspeed and around about 33,000 feet, it starts turning out left and flying at Mark 0.8. That's the changeover altitude. So for turbulence in the 727, they'll fly at 280 knots and then fly at Mark 0.8 if they're fly level 330 or above. One question you may get in the exam, it'll be a one marker, is how fast you're going compared to the low speed or high speed buffet boundaries when you're flying at the turbulent penetration speed. So let's look at an example of this together. We're going to say we're flying at turbulent penetration speed, we're at 30,000 feet, and we're at 65 ton. The first thing I'd like to do is draw in an altitude. So I'll draw in where 30,000 feet is. The next thing I want to do is draw in the curve that represents a buffer boundary for 65 ton. You can see we have 60 ton and 70 ton, but there's no 65 ton curve, so we can make one ourselves. It's just going to be exactly halfway between 60 and 70. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see how poorly these charts are drawn in the first place. After that, I'm going to draw a line on the left hand side where the altitude meets the curve go vertically down and read off what indicated airspeed that is. So that looks about 245 knots. I'm going to do the same thing with a high speed buffet. That's going to be about 320 knots. We know the turbulent penetration speed at this altitude is 280 knots indicated. So in this scenario we can see we're 35 knots faster than the low speed buffet and we're 40 knots slower than the high speed buffet. So this is the way the question will actually be written. It will ask how much faster are you from the low speed and how much slower are you from the high speed. It can be very easy to get them mixed up so just be very careful with the wording and what the question's actually asking. In the next video, we're gonna look at optimum altitudes. So as I said about altitude capability, I won't actually look at this chart unless they specifically say there's moderate or heavy turbulence. And if they do, it's kind of setting alarm bells off to say, you probably won't need page 2-14, you're probably gonna need the buffer boundary charts. All right, let's have a look at optimum altitudes next.